Hey everyone, it's time for another 3 at 3 on Solar PV. I'm Jen Runyon, Chief Editor of Renewable Energy World. And I'm Paula Mintz, Chief Market Research Analyst, SPV Market Research. Good to see you, Paula. Hi, Jen. Hey. Okay, today, we're, well, what we always do is we take three topics, we talk about them for three minutes each, and then we move on and go back to our days. And today, we're going to look at U.S. manufacturing, module pricing, and some news from Tesla. So let's start with U.S. manufacturing. We've had some bumps in the road. Probably, I know that Paula could see them coming, but let's talk about them. So what happened, Paula? Well, I think it, uh, it's more like a steady downhill slide, as I wrote about in Renewable Energy World, et cetera. And it's a complex story. I, I spent a lot of time on the phone yesterday with a reporter from the Christian Science Monitor mm -hmm. <laughs> and trying to explain that this isn't an overnight thing. It started decades ago, in part because we really haven't appropriately invested in manufacturing for solar in the U.S. It's a state-by-state -state haphazard thing. So on the federal level, there's really nothing. And on the demand side, even incentives have been haphazard, the mm -hmm. ITC being the strongest driver uh, for large-scale and even small-scale and then net metering for DG. So it's you need both. Right. Mm. And uh, in that, I actually was forced myself to think through some things. Did the last tariff situation actually do any good? Not really. It didn't bring back U.S. manufacturing. No, Something no, like that's not going to. I mean, honestly, and it penalized people who buy things. Mm. So did it do any good? No. Now we find ourselves with Ceneva, a company that took uh, some investment funds up uh, after their bankruptcy to file the petition. <laughs> and uh, what would be the point of it? Is it going to bring, the, is it enough in their funding there to bring back their manufacturing? No. Is the petition going to bring back U.S. manufacturing something that has been dying for decades at this point, at least, at least over a decade at this point? No. So um, it's a really complex, sad topic. Now, here's something, and I know this seg segues a little maybe too rapidly into our next topic. Should Solar World follow suit, that's the European parent that filed for insolvency, should U.S. Solar World shut its doors? We have no crystalline cell manufacturing in the U.S. Module assembly, let's forgetting about the thin films right now. Okay. Module assembly in the U.S. is for crystalline cells. Right. Most of the module assemblers buy cells, if not close to all, mm. from China, Thailand, Malaysia, Vietnam, yeah. to assemble Asia. into modules here. Yes. Yeah. So they will be hit. But even if there's a tariff, but even if there is no tariff, at this point, uh, this is a, that would make it almost 100%, it would make it 100% import market for crystalline, and prices could go up, likely would go up. Would we they? have no price control, zero. Right. right. You have and to have some price control. You have yeah. to have some competition. Yeah, there would absolutely. Be none. So, well, what about, what do you think about, like, you know, sometimes people call them protectionist policies, you know, you have to have made in America modules in order to get certain incentives or certain states will even put some of those in place. What do you think about that? Is that an option? Well, there's no product that any buys, anybody buys from anywhere unless and that unless it's a very small shop. Okay, unless it's a maker of wood chopping down their own trees. I mean, that's kind of an exaggeration. <laughs> what goes into a solar module comes from all over the world, oh, just like what true. goes into a car comes from all over the world. We need to recognize that if you want to encourage manufacturers to set up module assembly in the U.S., then what you do is you incentivize buying the module that's assembled in the U.S. You have to be very clear. Okay. But the cell, again, particularly if Solar World is gone, is going to come from somewhere else. Right. So do you want to encourage cell manufacturers to uh, start up extremely expensive manufacturing in the U.S.? Well, then you need a stable market. Mm -hmm. So you, the ITC, you know, has its limits. It you know, may become a football and tax reform if we ever get there. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you need a stable, long-lived market. They have to know that someone in the U.S. is going to buy their product or someone in Latin America or someone in Canada. And a lot of people, right? I mean, because you need scale. You need, to, you need to be selling a lot of product to be making sense. Yes. 
And a lot of people don't realize that, particularly right now, there's a little slippery slope going on to reduce the pilot scale timeline. I was trying to explain that yesterday. So there's lab. Yeah. First of all, you get an idea. You develop a champion cell about the size of my teeny little finger, okay. smaller maybe. And then you say, I've got the sufficiency on this tiny little cell. And then you have to replicate it on pilot on production type equipment. Mm -hmm. That's called pilot scale. And that's you know, it's not one year. You know, if you're starting from the lab, it's like five years. Yeah. It might be a little shorter if you're just starting, you know, transplanting cell equipment, but you still need a year for the transplanted equipment and more. You also, for for a brand new greenfield, so that's a long time. So mm -hmm. even, no matter, even encouraging cell manufacturing in the U.S., which is really what we need, you know, what we would hope for, for a healthy, innovative market, it's going to take a long time because yeah. it just doesn't, okay, we install the equipment, boom, we're going. Um, and then you need your UL. And then you need other, cert even right. you need all your certifications, let's just put it that way. And that takes time. Plus, now the old standard in solar is every new, you know, new manufactured cell slash module had to sit there in the year uh, in the field for a year and perform yeah that sort of got truncated by sort of you know accelerated testing right. but studies are now showing and people i respect are now saying that you actually do need that year in the field you need that thing to sit out there in the weather to really judge its performance um and that stopped happening a while ago hmm. so the point is it's not instant soup, soup here. A tariff is, A, not going to really encourage manufacturing startup because anybody thinking about starting manufacturing here is going to go, okay, is it a stable market? And what they will likely choose to do instead of cells is module assembly, and even that is not overnight. Yeah. And then any new product needs a very long timeline to be commercial. People forget that. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, so as you know, as I, I've written about this on REW and in other reports, little, you know, going back to Smoot Hawley decades ago, yeah. right? Yeah. A little protectionism there. There was that was supposed to initially protect farmers, right? What it led to, it's cutting the story really short, is protectionist activity around the world. Prices actually went up. So it did no good. Mm. It, it, in this day and age, in this global environment, it, 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 we really need to be very balanced in decisions about how we encourage market manufacturing in a country. And I almost never see balanced decisions. Interesting. So, but so you're... You know the big caution. It sounds like what you're what you're saying is that that prices can go up. Will probably go up. I mean, uh, could uh, go I said up. can't. Can't. I wouldn't say probably. I would say those two who will likely suffer the most. I will say, given that, it, particularly if Solar World shuts down, I know that there's a, there are hard feelings. Uh, quite a few people against Solar World, but yeah. I have to look at this very objectively. They're the only crystalline manufacturer left in the U.S. Right. So if they shut down, then all of the crystalline that the module assemblers uh, assemble into modules will have to be imported. And that means we have zero price control. Yeah. We have a big market that would actually make a dent globally. It's not like, it's not as big as China's, but it's big enough. It's multi-gigawatt now. Oh, yeah. So we have no control. If you want that engine to keep going, we have to buy modules or cells from some, modules and cells from someone else to feed this market. And that means who's ever selling in doesn't, you know, they can raise prices if they want to. Yeah. Hmm. Well, small buyers are probably the hardest hit. Okay. All right. When you say small, you're talking less than what? Less than well, you know, installers that are doing, so you know, a megawatt left and yeah. less a year. I mean, people don't really realize this industry actually has, is still got a lot of small a business lot, a lot of small. there. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And those are the one, those are the, those are the houses that are hit by, by higher prices initially. Right. And, but in this case, right now with such a big market here, developers, and EPC are not going to walk away and go, eh, well, I can't find a module at 39 to 42 cents, so I'm not going to install this very big system that I have contra signed contracts for. They're kind of stuck. Mm. Well, that's interesting. All right. Well, we're going to definitely keep a close eye on that. And we're almost out of time. We're pretty much are out of time. So let's just quickly touch on uh, the Tesla announcement. Their, their roof product is getting close. They may actually be starting up manufacturing soon in New York. 
maybe. Highly doubt it. I know that every time I mention this on Twitter or anything else, I get some... Uh, Pushback. I mean, pushback. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the discussion we had earlier about how long it actually takes to develop a commercial product holds there, too. Yeah. For cells, not this year, if indeed they are installing cell equipment, if indeed they are. You have to see a stable market. I mean, I... So uh, the kind of bets are off there because that may not actually be what's driving them to install cell manufacturing equipment. Mm, is yeah, whether sure. or not they can make money, given the high debt, et cetera, et cetera, that Tesla supports all over the company. That may not be a driver. They may not care. But nonetheless, there are, there are manufacturing timelines that have to be met. So this year for cell production, highly unlikely. Okay. For module assembly, you could see a little bit by the end of the year. Will you see a gigawatt? No. For their roof product, I if I would guess that someone else is making that out of the country. That mm. hasn't even had enough time to actually be, you know, go through pilot scale and into commercial production. These are th timelines, actually, that Tesla needs to take seriously. Because if they do not take them seriously, you have... For this poor, vulnerable industry that is also crucial, by the way, I think, to our energy future globally, you, you, you risk doing damage to it. This is not a car, a very expensive car. This is something that actually is necessary. We cannot afford bad quality out there, period. Cannot afford bad quality, period. Now, I will remind everybody that Solar City, ever since they had the agreement with New York State was saying that they were going to be starting up production any time now. That equipment has been being installed for a very long time. Yeah. Where is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's my okay. Well, keep an eye on all those good things, all those things to watch. Lots of food for thought, as always, Paula. Thanks so much, and thanks to everybody for watching. Take Talk care. Talk to you next time. Till next Bye. time. Bye.